time to time, many questions go unanswered. But in the wrestling world, the answers are always right in front of you. No matter the distance in the journey, I will search far and wide for all the answers. Life has no shortcuts, but when it comes to the squared circle, I'm going to be cutting corners to get you the truth. As House of Glory presents Cutting Corners with JD. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season two of Cutting Corners. This is episode number three. I am JD, and I'm here with one of the most exciting female performers on the indie circuit right now, Jordan Grace. Thank you so much for joining me on Cutting Corners. Thank and you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, we have common ground already right before we hit uh, record on the cameras. You hate New York traffic just as much as I do. Yes, I think I think most everybody does, though, right? I, no I one likes it. it. Can we agree on that? No one likes I it. it. You said uh, seven miles you're staying uh, away? And yeah, I, go, I, go, I have to go to the Hammerstein Ballroom after this. Seven miles is probably going to be like an hour to get there. That's ridiculous. I hate it. But uh, we're going to talk professional wrestling here today. Um, I want to know a little bit more about you, and I want to get you familiar with the House of Glory Faithful. Um, you have somewhat of an interesting story uh, on how you got into the business and how you became a pro professional wrestler. If you don't mind explaining that to everybody watching. Okay, so I'm ready to tell it. Um, I was 14. Uh, my mom started dating a guy from MySpace. I know, like, MySpace is old news now but uh people used to date on it uh he was an independent professional wrestler from austin texas and he had he went to a training school in austin and i love wrestling i've loved wrestling since i was like you know six years old and i was just fascinated with it and so i went to the training school and texas doesn't have an athletic commission so you can pretty much do like anything you want and i was 14 and i started training as a professional wrestler wow yeah, that's uh, that's unbelievable. Um, it's it's so important to get started at a young age. I know you were here watching the kids train, um, and I'm looking at them. I'm like, man, it's it's so hard. I, I think it's important to start training at a relatively young age, but I think 14 might be like a little too young. <laughs> I think you should probably like graduate high school first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of that, influences um, they come in many varieties, many different forms. Uh, many different people. Who are some of your influences growing up and um, up until this point, mentors in your life? Wrestling-wise, uh, Beth Phoenix was always just like, she was surreal to me, just everything about her. I've never been like, you know, model thin or anything like that. So just, I looked up to her for a long time. Uh, China, when I started watching Absolutely. older tape, like, she was incredible and she was the first woman I saw that was like legitimately strong and I loved that and that I feel like that empowered me um outside of wrestling my mom was definitely one of my biggest role models she she's not like a fan of wrestling she doesn't dislike it either but when she found out that I wanted to do it and that I was actually like decent at it she's been behind me 100 percent for the past eight years yeah it's unbelievable um China in the hall of fame you think it's gonna happen Oh, man, oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I hope so, but, you know, God only knows, She's right? She's done so much. That it's She's done be. so much. It's like, can, can you not put her in there? Can you not do it? Yeah, yeah speaking of that, my father, uh, he knows what I do here for House of Glory. He started watching the WWE again because I'm in this, doing this, and he, he mentions Matt Hardy. He's like, you, uh, you know, as I call it, Matt's match. Yeah. A few times here in House of Glory, he's like, you're going to be calling Delete's match? <laughs> so, I mean, it's cute to see them get into it. But I, I love it. My mom, uh, they had a viewing party on my TNA, like, debut yeah. match. They had, like, a huge viewing party, my That's whole awesome. family. It was great. That's awesome. Uh, with women's wrestling being at an all-time high right now, with the potential of the women this year more so than any other year to main event WrestleMania in 2019, what do you feel you bring to the table, uh, and what makes you stand out from every other female wrestler in the business or that is trying to break into the business? Well, I don't know about women trying to break into the business because there are some women that are just absolutely doing some insane things. Uh, but I think that I have a lot of experience at such a young age and I kind of saw what women's wrestling was like before the revolution happened and then right after it happened and it's still happening. So I feel like I'm gonna bring that experience into this into this new year, and I feel like it's just going to be uh, really good for everybody. Absolutely. Um, with women's wrestling, uh, switching away from that to the indies as a whole, 
Uh, I know you took part in All In. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be there uh, with a few of my friends. Wasn't it just like mind blowing? Was, I walked in, I seen the stage, and I was like, I don't believe I'm actually here, and I was just fortunate enough to be a part of history. How do you think I felt? It was, it was crazy. <laughs> well, well, that's, where, that's where I'm going with the question. Uh, you were, in my honest opinion, um, not to say it because you're on the show, but legitimately the over the budget battle royal was one of my favorite things about the show. And your in altercation with Brian Cage was one of my favorite parts of the night. Uh, what was going through your head during that moment, just hearing the crowd and just that surreal moment? Well, you see this big, stupid, fast smile on my face. So <laughs> literally every time I think about it, every single time, I just, I can't believe that it actually happened. And I think that was a very pivotal moment in my career that really like skyrocketed me through the rest of 2018 because that's when so many eyes on me, eyes were on me. And I could have either made it or break it, made it. I don't know, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, I just thought it was an incredible experience. Um, when I lifted him up on my up on my shoulders, I had no idea that there was going to be that kind of reaction, and it was just it was surreal for me, honestly. And then, and then Bully Ray had to ruin it all. Yeah, Bully Ray yeah. had to ruin it all. But that's what he does, right? That's uh, that's like his thing. That's his shtick, yeah. Um, it was my first time in Chicago for all. Of that. Uh, I never been to Chicago before. So it was certainly an experience for me to try out uh, what they're most famous for, the deep dish pizza and their Chicago style hot dogs. When I got back, I spoke to everybody about how I dislike both. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, New York all the way. So I'm gonna ask you because I had heat for it, so I wanna see what you say. What do you prefer, New York style pizza or Chicago style pizza? Okay, so first of all, I wanna point out that I've never had a Chicago style hot dog. I've never had one before. And I've That's been crazy. to Chicago a lot of times um, but I'm gonna go with you on this one. I love New York style pizza. I absolutely adore it. Chicago style is great, but it's so it's so heavy. Yes. You know, it's it's like eating an actual pie, yes. <laughs> fork yes. and knife. There's 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 no hands involved. The mountains of cheese. I'm a big cheese guy, but that's leaving. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> um, I know you have a big presence on social media. Um, I uh, I dabble in Twitter every now and then. Uh, it could be quite a daunting task for anybody if you're in the public eye. And I know you've had your fair share of uh, experiences, good and bad, with the internet trolls, or what I like to call the degenerates. Um, how it's do you a good word. Yeah. How do you feel about the fans who are vocal on social media when it comes to the sport, good and bad? Because I know, you know, we all feel entitled, and you know, a lot of wrestlers are coming out saying that the fans are entitled, infants like Xavier Woods just mentioned it. Um, and what's been the best and the worst as far as you personally from what you've seen on social media? I think it's good that fans voice their opinions because, you know, without fans, what would wrestling be, right? Like, I feel like they can pretty much do whatever they want. And it's up to us how we actually react to it. And some things, you know, it really, it really gets under my skin, some things that people say about me, but I, I try not to respond to it and I try not to, like, let it get to me because those same people that don't like me they love something else about professional wrestling, right? Maybe they don't like intergender wrestling, but maybe they like hardcore wrestling or high-flying wrestling, and we need those fans, right? Yes. Um, and what was your second question? Uh, social media. I know you, ha you had some people, like, just, we oh. just weirdos, I'm sure. Like, what's the best that you've seen and the worst that you've seen? Okay, the best that I've seen was I actually – I have my DMs open. I don't know if you know that or not, but I just try and give – people an equal opportunity <laughs> some people squander and some people are yeah some people are awesome um but you know the M the eminem song uh what is it what is it the really popular one stan yes so someone actually sent me a stan song about creepers in wrestling and it was it was all the lyrics and it was just absolutely insane and that was uh one of the best things i've ever gotten was just a song that was written for me <laughs> <laughs> to the to the lyrics of Stan. Wow. Um, also, people message me all the time saying, you know, that I'm inspirational and stuff like that. I guess I post a lot of workout videos, so there's been fans that have messaged me like before and after pictures because I sometimes go on there and I send them like personalized workout plans. Like, I don't know if I just am bored one day and, <laughs> and want to do something like that. And some of the worst things I get, I get, you know, the the penis pictures. Of course, that's one, of the, that's one of the things I get. The craziest thing that I've gotten as of late was this guy actually uh, made a collage of himself naked in the gym. Um, he just... 
<laughs> I don't know what else to say. But he was just, he just videotaped himself doing like jumping jacks, push ups, squats, and he was butt naked. And he took screen caps of this video and made an entire collage for me and sent it my way. His, uh, his name on Instagram was Big Booty Brody. Oh my God. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> well, how do you, well, how do you feel about, about the good? How do you feel about uh, people coming to you and, and you know, asking you for workout advice like that? How does it make you feel? The good stuff is why I leave my DMs open because I that stuff legitimately makes me feel good and it feels like I can help people out, yeah. right? Because I didn't used to always be like in super good shape. I probably lost like 50 pounds over the years. And if I didn't reach out to people and ask for workout advice, I don't know if I would ever got to the point where I am now, right? Okay. Um, are you more of a block or a mute person? Oh, I'm block. Block, block 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, honestly, I have 2,367 last I checked block. Again. That's crazy. I don't have that many, but I've been very liberal with it lately. 2019, it's going to be insane for me. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> um, ESPN. Honey, you mentioned intergender wrestling before. Uh, ESPN did an article this summer about the nature of intergender wrestling, saying that those who might see it, you know, might see it as shocking because it's not familiar to them. Uh, I know you were in the ring with Brian Cage at All In with that big spot. Uh, I know you wrestled Joey Janela, uh, MJF. Uh, what is your take on intergender wrestling, and would you like to see that be the next natural step in women's wrestling or women's evolution? Uh, yeah, 100%. I mean, yes to both questions. I love intergender wrestling. I love to wrestle men. It's like definitely one of my one of my favorite things about wrestling is that we can actually wrestle men. I mean, UFC, you can't really do that because yeah. it's you know, real. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I use those quotation real. marks liberally. <laughs> um, but I love it. I love the what the opportunities it gives women to elevate ourselves, you know? Yeah. And it definitely, it makes me feel empowered personally to wrestle these guys, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it's a huge inspiration to little girls and women themselves that you can do anything the men can do, right? Do you feel the fans have embraced that fully or is there still work to be done? Okay, I don't think the fans have embraced it fully because a lot of them are, I just think they, there's a misconception that domestic violence has something yeah. to do with intergender wrestling which has nothing to do with it at all yeah. um well, that's the reason why wwe won't do it yeah it's sure. it's it's absolutely insane there's two consenting adults that are fake fighting each other yeah. and there's people who are in a relationship like <laughs> i just don't get I don't, I don't get that logic right well, that's <laughs> i mean wrestling fans like i'm not gonna say they're not fickle. the smartest but yeah they're fickle that's a good word fickle. that's a good word yeah um Impact Wrestling, I want to congratulate you on becoming a member of their roster since November. Thank you. And I'm sure one of your goals is to get yourself in line for Tessa Blanchard. Yeah. And a Impact Women's Championship. Why Impact? And what made you choose Impact over any other promotion? <sighs> well, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll give you a little exclusive here. Uh, never been contacted by WWE besides that was for my next extra work. Oh. Yeah. Never been contacted them besides for extra work. And there was uh, something weird about the Mae Young Classic, which I'm sure you'll ask me about in a second, too. Um, Ring of Honor, I don't know if you know my husband, John Gresham. Uh, he signed a Ring of Honor. He's been signed there for two years. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. I went to the tryout. I did all that stuff. But I guess there was no interest in me. And Impact is the first, peop the first ones that reached out to me with a plan, you know, like a plan of attack. They gave me, like... A direct thing that they wanted to do with me and that I really embraced that and I liked that so that's why I signed with them yeah how, how does it feel to be an impact I know they were under a lot of fire earlier in the year and under new management Scott Demore and Don Callis have done yeah. a great job creatively there how does it feel I just think the morale backstage? Um, it's it's amazing all the people I feel like I know there are from the Indies you know they're they're the people that never really got the look by WWE because they're so underrated, you know? But they have one of the best rosters right now to me personally. Exactly. They have one of the best rosters because they, they decided to take a chance on some of these people. Yeah. Like Willie Mack, you know, he doesn't have that I'm conventional worried. look, but he's incredible, right? Um, other than that, like, uh, they have so many different women's storylines going on right now. And they're actually, like, taking time out to think about these women's storylines. They're not just throwing women in six-man tags. Right. <laughs> I hate that. Everybody knows watching you. I hate that. Like you can have more than one woman storyline mean something. Exactly. There's three right now. There's there's three right now that I know of. There's there's four. There's the Scarlet one, which is she's not even a wrestler. They're just using her 
incredibly. Yeah. Uh, me and Kat, there's the Sue Young, um, Sue Young, who is it? Alley one. Yeah. Dude, there's, and then Tessa and, and, Tessa and Ty. It's, yeah. it's awesome to me. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, I know you're 22 years old and have yeah, a career. Yeah, so old. <laughs> <laughs> and have a whole career ahead of you, but again, you mentioned it before, um, you were never approached by WWE. And if the Mae Young Classic was to present itself, let me reword my question. If the Mae Young Classic was to present itself, would you do it being where you are now and seeing how successful it has been? Well, I can't do it for a obviously, couple of years, obviously. obviously. But if for, if for some right crazy reason my contract you know, expires in a couple of years and I'll be 24 then, which is not like a bad age, right? No. Uh, and no. they contact me, I definitely would not say no. That's good to know. I'll be watching. <laughs> Usually when I ask a question of what's your favorite anything, uh, it could be food, it could be uh, a band, musician, a certain match. Some people find that actually very difficult to answer that question, but for me, some of those things are very easy to answer. Um, my favorite match of all time is The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25. So specific. Yes. I'm like amazed that you yes. can, you can yes. even remember that. Uh, do you have one professional wrestling match that you could go back and watch over and over, uh, one match to call your favorite? If so, why? Okay, so I want to preface this by saying that I have a very, very bad memory, and it's probably from being dropped on my head, you know, like <laughs> dozens of dozens of times throughout my life since I was like a child. Um, but there was actually a match just a, a few months ago. It was uh, at Progress, I think it was in Boston. And this is going to sound biased, but it was, it was John Gresham and Chris Brooks versus uh, Pete Dunne and Trent Seven. And that match was just everything I think wrestling should be. It was so entertaining from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, I don't know if you, do you watch Progress at all? No. Okay. I'm well, sorry. they actually did a, a kissing spot. Really? So <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was like, it like blew up on Reddit. It was a, it was a huge thing. And um, my boyfriend, my husband actually kissed Pete Dunne. He dipped him and he kissed him at the I end of the match. Pete Dunne being too happy. <laughs> He let it happen, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, the wrestling trolls are crazy, you know, talking about, oh, this is, this is why wrestling is gay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, leave it up to them to say something stupid like that. But I know that's not like, it's not like the best thing, the best match to say, but I didn't grow up, you know, watching wrestling matches from 1995. I was born in 1996. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how you remember that. <laughs> I remember specifically where I was, who I was with, and what I was doing <laughs> during that match. That's how great it was to me. You remember everything? Everything, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a true wrestling yeah. fan. <laughs> uh, wrestling has so many talented women uh, doing so many amazing things right now. Is there one woman that you would consider a dream match? If so, why? Um, I'm going to go back to a person that I have idolized since I was you know, 14 years old, and that's Beth Phoenix. Actually, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Um, dream match and current dream match. Dream match and current yeah. dream match. Mm, who, who do I want to wrestle right now? Um, you know, there actually isn't anybody that I want to wrestle right now that I haven't already wrestled. That's That I can't wrestle right yeah. now, I should say. I mean, in the WWE, I think me and Asuka would just absolutely murder it. That would be crazy to me. <laughs> I have a few, few friends personally that would love to see that. Yeah, I would, I would love to see it myself. Yeah. Uh, we're wrapping up here. Um, we're about to turn the page on another year. 2018 is coming to a close. What do you consider to be, up until this point, the best professional moment in your career? And what can we expect from you in 2019? Uh, we're going back. That all-in moment was, I think, like I said, the pivotal moment in my career that really helped me get to where I am right now. And that was only, what, in September? Mm -hmm. It was only a few months ago. And I think the first half of my year in 2018 was great but after that moment everything just blew up for me like I did I debuted on progress I did that um just I got the TNA contract like I really think that Cody took a chance on me and he really helped me out by giving me that opportunity absolutely ladies and gentlemen someone you're going to be seeing a lot of in 2019 Jordan Grace this is Cutting Corners episode number three House of Glory HOG Wrestling Dot net. Jordan, thank you so much. Thank you.